Hello, I'm Edward Tart, once a Catholic priest for five years in the 1960s, now an atheist, which means I find no credible evidence for the existence of any God. Christians believe that the Bible is the Word of God. I have used the Bible's quotations in support of slavery as one of the many ways to discredit the Bible and to show that the biblical God, whom Christians and others worship, is actually evil. Of the several biblical references supporting slavery found in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, in my opinion the worst one is this quotation from Exodus chapter 21. If a man beats his slave with a rod and the slave dies, he must be punished. But if the slave lives a day or two, he shall not be punished, for the slave is his property. As author and speaker Sam Harris has said, Anyone who thinks that slavery, in moral terms, still may have something going for it, has been completely marginalized in our society. Well, what sort of instruction do we get from the Bible on the subject of slavery? The creator of the universe clearly expects us to keep slaves. This is true in the Old Testament. This is true in the New Testament. Jesus clearly expects us to keep slaves. Many Christians imagine that Jesus has repudiated or somehow rescinded all of Old Testament law. This is untrue. On the subject of slavery, 1 Timothy 6, New Testament, admonishes slaves to serve their masters well. Serve your, serve your believing masters all the better and they thereby partake in their virtue. So if we think this book was written by the creator of the universe, or if we think this book is somehow, even if written by men, unsurpassed and unsurpassable in moral terms, we should own other human beings and make them work for us. The only, guide, the only restraint that God urges upon us on this subject is not to beat them so badly that we knock out their eyes or their teeth. But we can surely beat them. They're slaves, after all. In our nation's troubled past, Christians used the Bible to justify slavery. At Facebook, I have put on my timeline some posters about this issue. In one of them, a little boy, who probably had slaves among his not-too-distant ancestors, is reading the Bible and asks his mother, Mom, why does the Bible say that slavery is okay? And his mother replies, Just ignore that part, son. Another poster quotes Dan Savage. The shortest book in the New Testament is a letter from Paul to a Christian slave owner about owning his Christian slave. And Paul doesn't say Christians don't own people. Paul talks about how Christians own people. We ignore what the Bible says about slavery because the Bible got slavery wrong. If the Bible got the easiest moral question that humanity has ever faced wrong, what are the odds that the Bible got something as complicated as human sexuality wrong? And another poster quotes actress and activist Mira Sorvino. Why does it not say anywhere in the Bible that slavery is wrong? How is it possible that it is not immoral to own another person? Why isn't that one of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not own another person? You want to sit here and tell me that fornication is worse than owning someone? Well, my adversary, Church of Christ preacher Lee, bases his entire ministry and his life on the Bible. So he cannot tolerate my using the Bible's references to slavery as a means to discredit the Bible. Accordingly, Lee has written the following. Evolutionists and atheists that use the Bible's teaching on how one should treat an indentured servant that is, a slave, 
as a means to detract from the Bible's validity ought to be barred from owning pets. After all, if you're an animal and Fluffy is an animal, who gave you the right to own him and expect him to mind you? The fact is, the Bible teaches how one ought to rightfully treat his servant as a fellow human whose role it is to serve. To all of you, thank you for watching this video.